<laughs> how how did you know that? How did you how did you come up on that? Don't make big loves one more door. <laughs> That's secret. That's secret. I ain't giving anything away. I ended up writing songs with Joy Deb, Linnea Deb, and Jimmy Joker. And they are magical because they're so good. How did you get started in music? Do you know how to play any instruments? Ooh, uh, music, I think, started really early because I'm from uh, a country in Africa called Congo. And the culture there is musical uh, all the time. So it's not, you know, it's not, it's just normal that everybody sings, everybody plays uh, drums uh, and, and stuff like that. So I think uh, there's no, there's no time where I started. It just happened because everybody else sings. Uh, and I know how to play guitar. Uh, and I'm rusty at drums, but I used to play when I was younger. What made you decide to audition for Talang and Swedish Idol? Okay, so when I first uh, saw uh, Idol, <laughs> there's my winning <laughs> pose. When I first saw Idol, I think the year was 2009, and I was, I was like, what, what is this concept, and what, what, what is this show? Because it, you know, people came in, they sang, some were good, some were bad, and then they became better every week. And I was like, this is my my kind of show. I want audition. And I was like eight, eight years old. And everybody was like, everybody was like, no, you can't because you're too young. And I was like, what? So I had to wait like eight more years. So, you know, the hype just every year, I was like, in, in five years, I can audition. In four years, I can audition. In three years, I can audition. Uh, and then my uh, extra mom, I call her my uh, bonus mom, uh, actually applied to Swedish Talang. Uh, so it's like the Swedish Got, got Talent, uh, the Got Talent uh, show in Sweden. She she auditioned, um, she, she sent a video of me singing and they were really excited about that. But I didn't know about it until like the last month. So they called me and were like, yeah, we're, we're calling from uh, Swedish Talang and uh, you're in, so can you come down here next weekend? And I was like, what? So uh, that was her doing. Uh, and I got to do that and it was really fun. A lot, it was a good experience. So I think uh, when I finally got to do Idol because I, I, I turned 16 and 17, uh, I was already, I was ready for it because I already done Talang and, and so. Did you have any professional vocal training before meeting a vocal coach through Idol? A little, uh, because I, Sweden has a great school called Kursurskolan, which is a, a, a school for culture, culture uh, and music. And uh, I had a vocal coach like in two, one year like that, because I, I just played the guitar otherwise. So uh, mm. I sang a little bit, but uh, not, you know, uh, really good. <laughs> professionally what was the most challenging part of participating in idol that's a hard question wait uh, if you asked me while i was doing idol i would for sure have like five answers <laughs> uh i think the most challenging part was that you i only had one week to come up with a whole new idea uh, about what i was going to sing uh what i what i wanted to say with a number so i think you know, you if you did a great number, everybody expected the next week to be as great or even greater. Uh, so the challenging part was the challenging part was like when you did a great performance, you had to outdo yourself the next week, uh, and so on in like three months. So by the end of Idol, I was, I was done. I was like. I need to breathe, I need to go home, I need to sleep, uh, I need to hang with my friends because I was, no, that was uh, so intense every single week, you know. Uh, but with, with Melody Festival, and it's just one performance. So I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. How, mu how much involved were you in the performances in Idol? Like, did you, like, were you, like, in picking what you were to wear or, like, the performances? Yeah, uh, we uh, we were involved re uh, a lot because uh, I had to choose a song, and then 
uh, they had a team that did the whole, you know, um, the whole stage, uh, and they 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 did that, and uh, with the clothes, uh, it was always a it was always uh, a conversation with the stylist, and I actually have the same stylist now as I did in back in Idol, uh, so mm. I feel really comfortable because uh, he's really good and he's he's good at you know at picking the exact right stuff that you want uh, and then he always does it uh, really good because he you know me I think we clicked very much very good so it's it's both you know he's really good at what he what he does and sometimes I come up with something and ask him if it's okay uh, and then we it goes you know uh, back and forth like that who is your stylist uh, his name is uh, Julian Hernandez uh, mm. he's, yeah. he is really great cool. yeah tell us about your cover of the song how will I know by Whitney Houston did you pick this song to release uh, yeah I actually picked that song to release uh, because everybody wanted the Eurovision rise like a phoenix song to be released and I love that too but I mean, the How Will I Know one, that was my favorite, uh, all-time favorite, you know, because I got to do exactly what I love to do. And that's just, you know, uh, go on stage and just have fun with it. Uh, I had so much fun doing that number and I have so, had so much fun uh, releasing that song. Uh, and I love that everybody still listens to it because uh, it's a song that I adore. How has Whitney Houston inspired you artistically? Oh, she actually has inspired me a lot because I remember when I stumbled upon her, I was like 12 uh, and I immediately started, you know, covering every single song she had. Uh, so I would I would sit in my room and just scream, don't make me close one more door. And everybody was like, shut up, <laughs> because we <laughs> lived in, a, in an apartment, so you couldn't just sing as loud. Uh, so I think she inspired, because she's the greatest singer ev that ever lived. I believe that. And of course, she's, she inspired me to, you know, to dare to pick hard songs. So I, I could... Before I discovered Whitney, I did. I only sang male evo vocalist songs, mm -hmm. uh, and after that, I, I I would pick you know Celine Dion uh, and songs like that to to sing when uh, when I was little. So yeah, she was a, a great inspiration. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, she's uh, awesome. <laughs> were you in a band? <laughs> how did you know that? How did you how did you come up on that? I do my research. <laughs> oh Jesus! I, okay, okay, yeah. I was in an all boy band uh, a few years ago uh, when I started um, gymnasiet uh, or high school, as uh, it, it's called. Uh, so we, uh, because we, okay, it started out because I'm a singer, and all my friends are all in, uh, they all play instruments. So we were like. Why don't we ever play together? We never, you know, just come together and play. So we we did one show, and everybody loved it. So we started a, a band uh, called Coldsfoot, <laughs> and we just did the funk songs, and it was awesome. Uh, so th that we had a great time. Awesome. What kind of yeah. music did you play? A funk, funk, funk music. So we did a, a lot of Bruno Mars and, nice. and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. What did you like <laughs> about being a band? I think, you know, because sometimes on stage I can feel a little lonely. Uh, and they just, all the guys were so nervous. Uh, so I kind of, uh, my nev and, uh, <laughs> I couldn't be nervous because they were nervous. So I had to, you know, be the one that that said, "Come on, come on, guys, uh, we're gonna do great. You're really talented." And because I was so focused on their their stuff, so I forgot to be nervous. So that was a good part, you know, that I wasn't nervous because they were so nervous. So I think that because I feel so comfortable with having them on stage, having the dancers on stage uh, in Melo, 
uh, is a really uh, huge um it's a really good thing because i don't feel as alone on stage and i don't freak out as much tell us about the song i want to know released by ilory how did you end up singing on it <laughs> oh my gosh you did your research yes. yeah all that all that was uh, because ilory is uh, a friend of mine uh mm -hmm. who also uh went to the same school as me so all that was i think it was instrument uh, it was experimental so we were like yeah we should do a song of course so we just you know we just had fun with it so it wasn't it wasn't it was nothing uh, serious it was just uh, having fun and uh, releasing music for the first time so yeah that was just an experiment <laughs> nice it's nice to have like someone to collaborate yeah exactly so it was, it was a fun fun thing to do <laughs> tell us about uh, your duet with Anita Kristoffersson for the song Minnemans Spar. Oh my god, you went on that road? Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> How do you know all this? No, there's no do my research. Oh my god, <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> oh god, oh god. I okay, I mean, it's not it's not bad. Uh, it's no. uh, it's I think that summer I was like so uninspired to do music. And then she reached out to me and was like, do you want to do a song with me called uh, Mina Manspar? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Because I didn't have uh, any motivation motiv motiv motivation, because uh, nothing was happening. So I, en I ended up being in the music video and we did the whole thing. Uh, but just for fun, I think. Um, because, yeah, I, I, just, I was just unmotivated and then she motivated me. And I ended up uh, being an idol the same year. So, yeah, that was an off track. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other people that you would like to do a duet with? Of course, there's a lot of people. Uh, there's Swedish singer Sabina Dumba, who I love mm -hmm. and adore. And uh, doing a song with her would have been a dream come true. Uh, and then, of course, there's Sam Smith. I would love to do something with Sam Smith, but that's just, <laughs> you know, wishing, uh, wish thinking, you know. But you can dream. You never know yeah, what happens. Of course, dreaming is good. Yeah. <laughs> if it ever happens, I would freak out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're very fashionable and often wear accessories. Are you yeah. interested in fashion? Yeah, I love fashion. That's one of my interests and uh, hobbies. So I love dressing up, you know, uh, trying new things. That's why I love Julian, my stylist, because sometimes he's like, would you be open to try this thing? And I'm like, well, I, I would never have thought about it myself, but I can try it. And then I end up loving it. So that's the whole fun part about clothes you just uh, do something unexpected and it end up being good uh, so mm -hmm. uh, I, and I love that I, now I can combine my interest with fashion and my interest with with music uh, and you know go all in with both of them who are your fashion icons oh that's uh, easy that's Jaden Smith uh, Harry Styles and uh, Timothy Chalamet I love how they they dress Tell us about the song Crash and what did you like about it that made you want to release it? That's my favorite song of all time. Uh, and <laughs> there I am. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, Yeah, I think that's the best song uh, I've ever released. Aside from the Melody Festival and song, of course. Uh, and that that song is a lot like How Will I Know because it's, you know, it, it's funky, uh, it's groovy and it's uh, it's a lot of pop. Uh, and I love the melodies, uh, and I I think we released that because I was uh, it was in the middle of the pandemic where everybody was uh, locked in lockdown, and I was I I just wanted to go out dancing, but I couldn't dance, so we released the song, and I've danced uh, at home to to it ever since. You were announced as the supporting act for Lionel Richie on his Stockholm tour stop. Yeah. Uh, how did you get this opportunity? Will you still get to do this gig since it was postponed because of the pandemic? Oh, that was like, oh my God. I remember that coming out. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, you know, we, because I, I did Idol and I won. 
and um, Lionel is a, a jury um, member in American Idol. So we had that Idol connection. Uh, and so when he announced that he was coming to Sweden, uh, my uh, publicist and my tour manager were like, Uh, what about reaching out to Lionel and uh, seeing if you could be, you know, uh, the presenter act? And I was like, well, yeah, of course, let's do that. So we reached out, but we didn't expect anything. And then one week after, they they called us. They were like, Lionel is really excited. Uh, and yeah, so I was really excited. I, I'm very happy that he wanted to, he wanted me to warm up the stage, you know? So... Mm -hmm. When they canceled that show, I was so mad and so, so you know, just upset. But uh, they postponed it, so I feel good about about it. I hope it's uh, it's still going to happen. In an interview, you mentioned you are going to be a radio host. Can you tell yeah. us more about that show? Yeah, I, that, I'm really excited about that. So uh, it's called Shuvlisnat, which is uh, Swedish for eavesdropping. And mm -hmm. uh, so it's a concept. It's a concept where young people uh, from the age eight to fourteen, I believe, uh, young. So young uh, children uh, have told us stories about their, uh, you know, environment, maybe school, at home, well, their, you know, their lives. And it's all from racism to bullying, uh, but also love and, you know, uh, really funny stories. So it's a whole spectrum. And so them, they, they tell the stories and then we have young actors who retell the stories. Uh, as if their their stories happened to them. So it's actors playing the mm -hmm. person who told the story from the first time. And then I get to be the host. Uh, and it was an emotional roller coaster, you know. Uh, I was crying because a kid uh, was telling me about uh, him being bullied. And then I was laughing because another kid was telling a funny story uh, about something embarrassing that happened to him. Uh, and so it was just, you know, a, a whole specter. And every, they're so cute and so adorable. So you just want to hug them. But you can't because we live in a pandemic. <laughs> Where can people find this? It's going to air on the Pia Fira, uh, Sweden National. So it's going to be on Pia Fira, uh, Sveria, uh, which is a radio channel. Tell us about your song, Innan du går. How did you end up on it? Uh, I remember in you know, it was uh, our attempt to make funk, Bruno Mars funk, uh, in Swedish, uh, and I I liked that song, but I didn't I don't think we we didn't succeed with our mission, uh, and uh, I wanted to try again, but I don't know I I didn't I didn't feel like it was a winner the song it was it was uh, it was a fun song to do, but. It didn't embody the the dance vibe I wanted, so I think uh, it was a great effort. Effort, but it wasn't the song uh, I wanted to release the most. But we'll see. What inspired you to release your first Swedish song? I think it was because I connect to the Swedish language a lot because you know it's the language I speak the most every day. Uh, so to be able to sing in the same language as you uh, always talk uh, was more fun because every, everybody understands what you're saying and there's no hidden agenda with the song. Uh, so you can't really, um, nobody was wondering what do you mean with the song because it was so obvious because it's the same language as, as we always speak. Which language do you plan to release music in? Uh, right now we're gonna go with English because uh, I love singing in English and it's so much more fun uh, because I think when you sing when you sing in Swedish it gets really personal uh, and that's that's cool if that's the vibe you want but I want the uh, dance vibes you know. Have you done any songwriting? Yeah, I've been uh, writing whole, uh, the whole year. Last year I I, I sat in the in warm studios and was just writing songs. But I'm no, I'm a perfectionist, so I wasn't happy with none. 
I was happy with none of the songs. So, yeah, I'm still waiting for the right song to come. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> got the practice, at least. Yeah, exactly. I got the practice. So uh, the next time, I think we'll, 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 yeah, we'll come there. We'll get there. Tell us about your Melody Festivalin song and how you got it, since you're not credited as a writer on it. Uh, so in the summer, as I was saying, we were writing songs, and I ended up writing songs with Joy Deb, Linnea Deb, and Jimmy Joker, and they are magical because they're so good. Uh, and we wrote like five songs, I think. Uh, but I didn't feel I because I'm a perfectionist, so I didn't feel like any of the songs were good enough. One of them w- were intended for Mello, um, but I don't think uh, SVT. I don't think they liked it. Uh, the television uh, people that you know decide who gets to do Mello, uh, they, they didn't like it. Uh, but then the next day after our sessions, I got a call from Linnea, and she was like, "Oh my gosh, so you have to come down right now. We have the song for you." I was like, "No, I don't have the time." because uh, I was I was in school and you know uh but she was like no uh, it's 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 gonna be worth it I promise so I went down to uh, Stockholm and I heard the song for, for the first time and I was so excited for it because uh, they had written it uh, the same day and I was like oh my gosh this is a song uh, so we recorded it and now we're here <laughs> what is your song about Uh, so the song uh, "Voices" is about uh, unity. Uh, that it's about uplifting everyone's voices uh, because everyone deserves their voice to be heard. Uh, and I think it's a really important song because I, for one, don't think that uh, any any voice is higher than the other. I think we're all equal, uh, and we were born equal. Um, But some people don't think that, and I think uh, we shouldn't listen to them. We should listen to the ones who believe that we were put on this earth together and to lift everyone, everyone, and just be ourselves. So I think uh, it's re- it's very important for me to go with the song with that message that uh, that lifts uplifts everyone. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I love the song because uh, it's the right message for me. Who are you collaborating with for your mellow staging? Okay, uh, so it's uh, actually SVT's team, uh, which is Sasha uh, and uh, Jenny, Lotta. Uh, they're really good. Uh, it's a great team, and they've out- they've outdone themselves with this number. I think it looks amazing. Uh, and then Julian has uh, Julian Hernandez did the styling, uh, and yeah. So I think. I'm excited, and I hope everyone, but everyone else is excited as well. Yeah. How um, involved are you in the creative process of developing your staging? I, I was very, uh, very involved in the first, you know, stage where they wanted to know my idea, uh, and I remember that I didn't have any ideas about how the stage should look. My only idea was uh, to, you know, to boost the message with a song. Uh, and they did that really good. So I was just uh, uh, a part of this at the beginning, and then uh, I've just seen it grow uh, from one idea to a bigger idea. And yeah, so I think they they've outdone themselves, and they are really awesome. Mm-hmm. I agree. Mm-hmm. I really like it. It looks very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. What do you like to do for fun when you're not working on music? Oh, okay. Uh, I love uh, watching uh, Netflix series. I love watching all series, uh, but I always watch uh, Netflix. Uh, and that's pretty much what I do. I make music and I go to school and I watch Netflix series. <laughs> Can you name some of your favorite series? Oh, my favorite show, I think, is... Oh, I have so many, but Friends is one of my favorites. Uh, and now they took it off Netflix, so I'm really, I'm really upset about that. <laughs> But yeah, Friends is a big, uh, is a big. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of Friends. Which artist inspires you creatively? Oh, a lot of artists. Um, I'm inspired by Beyonce. I'm inspired by Bruno Mars, The Weeknd. You know, 
uh, I think everybody, uh, Adele. So uh, they inspire me, and I I think uh, my but my my most in influential uh, artist is James Brown and uh, Michael Jackson. They inspire me the most because I grew up listening to them and you know just uh, enjoying their art. So right now I'm in, I'm uh, yeah I'm still inspired by them till this day. Do you have an EP or album to release after Mellow? <laughs> that's secret. That's secret. I ain't giving <laughs> anything away. No, no, no. I, no, I, I ain't saying anything. You should just wait and uh, you'll see. <laughs> what are your career goals for 2021? I think my career goals are um, making more music videos and releasing more music than ever. Uh, and, you know, just uh, more music, I think. Have you picked up any new hobbies during quarantine? Hmm. I I I I I would say I do the exact same thing that I did before, just more. So I just watch more TV shows. I I think uh, in 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 um, in the fall I was watching like seven different TV shows every day, just you know uh, how, uh, jumping between them. <laughs> so I think I don't think it's very healthy, but it's fun. Yeah, this is having fun, <laughs> and you get to have like a relaxed time to just like. Exactly. Get to do something else. And right. lastly, where can yeah. people find you online? Okay, so you can find me on Instagram uh, and on uh, Twitter and on uh, TikTok, uh, uh, Snapchat, and I have the same name everywhere. So just uh, at Tusse O F C. That's me. Thank you so much for this, your time. Talking Thank to you me. very much. It was <laughs> it was wonderful. I did want to show you some fan tweets. This okay. says definitely one to watch out for. At the start of the year, I had his covers of Rise Like a Phoenix and How Will I Know on a loop. So Ooh. the person's excited about your songwriting team. Okay. A lot of people were excited about the songwriting team. Yeah, they, they are amazing. And I think they're responsible for like every other uh, song this year in Melo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're in it quite a bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.